Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Hey. Okay, I figured out my key to success. Now I'm locked in. Yeah. I learned how to open doors like a locksmith. Hey. Welcome back. You're now locked in with DK and Atwood. I'm Atwood. Killer to my left, DK. Right here on the mat. Yeah. He's got some sparring in. First time I've seen DK spar. Yeah, in a long time. Yeah, or you've never seen me spar? No. Ever? So. Oh, well, wow. not, I've seen you spar boxing. Oh, okay. I've never seen you like MMA spar. Yeah. Got it in with um, with Austin. Yeah, little Austin and uh, another uh, guy that wants to fight. Um, that, uh, you know, his name's uh, Colby and... You know he wants to fight, and so I'm like, "Hey, man, we gotta we gotta start yeah, sparring." You dude. guys were getting it in, man. It was inspiring to watch. Yeah. It really was. Um, it's crazy. It's like it's like riding a bike to me now, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like well, you could see funny. the different levels. I, I mean, obviously, no disrespect to Colby because uh, he's he's like just starting, right? right? right but right. you could see the levels in you, Austin, and Colby. Um, just with me and how me and Austin. Kind How of, you it's exchange. Kind of almost like a dance, if you will. No, yeah. Absolutely. You could tell you're both like extremely comfortable too. I mean, mm-hmm. damn, like at one point, uh Austin got the takedown on you and you flipped him over and you guys are going at it. It was inspiring to watch, man. Yeah. It really was. Um so that was cool to see. Um got a lot of things to to kind of talk about today. Um so I do want to mention that I'm not gonna say with who, but there's a good possibility of us partnering with a company that is on the rise that is partially owned by a UFC fighter. Um, so we'll have more news on that in the coming weeks. And, and if it does go through, like it's going to, anybody who trains that watches this, it will definitely benefit you, which is cool. Um, and then next week we plan to have Bobby Southworth yep. on the pod. OG. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fun, real OG. Yeah. Real OG, man. Bobby Southworth came here to the Academy. He kind of messaged me out of nowhere, man. Um, so if you don't know who Bobby Southworth is, um, it's on the ultimate fighter season one. Yep. And, you know, he was kind of controversial, too. He was, in, in a couple of different ways, man. That weight cut was, to this yeah, day, bro. it's got to be, like, Dude, the biggest I weight cut I've ever seen. I used to think about that guy. So, I thought about Bobby Southworth one time, because I, I cut that much before. Really? Yeah. I think, so what was, I was it, like, 22 pounds in 24 hours or yeah, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite do that. But I remember I got a call to fight in Orlando, and um, I, was, I got this call, and... Uh, I was eating at El Cerro <laughs> when with you my got daughter the call? when I got the call. Oh, no. It's a week out. <laughs> week out, dude. For wow. 155. And or, how much you think Or 160. Were? I think it was either 155. I either had to do a catch weight at 160 or I had to do a – it was at 155. I said, all right, let me go home. I'm going to see what my weight is. And I put a number in my head, and I 185 was the number. And I said, if I'm under 185, I'm going to take the fight. Because the pay wasn't – it wasn't too bad. And the guy's record – I mean, the guy w- didn't have nearly the experience I had. And I was like, Psh. you know, it's called Orlando City Fights. Had one show. Mm, okay. Yeah. New promotion. One show, yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, paid well, too. Nice. So, uh, fought um, that I cut – so much weight, man. I was like 184.8 or something like that. So I was still, I was under 185. Right. Cut my weight, man, and I was like death, dude. But that was my first fight that I went to a decision in. My 19th pro fight. Damn. I went to a decision and won a decision. Seth Petrozelli, you know Seth yep. Petrozelli? Is? Uh, he's he was famous on the, for knocking out Kimbo. Yeah, and he was on the Ultimate Fighter as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah he right. was on Ultimate Fighter. Right. Um uh he was uh anyways he's from i think he has a gym or in the orlando area it's called jungle gym or something like that mm-hmm. anyways uh he was the uh commentator and uh yeah he interviewed me after the fight and everything and uh another fun fact is i had one of my students was on that sh- same show and he was doing a kickboxing fight a pro kickboxing fight in the cage and he fought philip pro philip rowe phil rowe that name sounds familiar uh fresh prince on ultimate fight on ufc fights in ufc looks like literally looks like the fresh prince of bel-air i think i know Long who you're talking about and rangy yeah tall pounds. dude tall i think i know who you're talking about yeah so he fought um he fought cliff back in the day when he was on on the come up you know and you know feels a great guy we need to see about having him on you know um, yeah. i need to reach out with him reach out to him and uh 
have him on, man, because talk about an inspiring story, man. That guy started out 0-2 as a pro, and mm. now he's in the UFC. Yeah. Just fought Neil Magny. Yep. He lost a split decision that, in Neil okay, Magny. Yes, yes. Yeah. Him and, and Neil Nag- Magny is a they monster. Were, dude, this guy was 0-2, man. I remember I the first time I met Phil Rowe and was – and dude, I this guy was so memorable. He was so nice and tall and funny, dude. I remembered him. Usually, you meet guys at shows, and you know they want to take like he. I think he took a picture with me. He took a picture with uh, Tebow, and was just talking to us because he was supposed to be on the show, and something happened. He had drove from West Virginia, wow, like just drove all over the place, man. And I was just like, wow. Somehow, I just kept in touch with this guy with friend friends on facebook and instagram and stuff like that and then um next thing you know he starts winning he's winning and then out of nowhere you know my my teammate fought him in a kickboxing fight ended up wanting winning my teammate won a split decision and then i won a split decision too um but anyways uh phil just now you know i think he was on the contender series yes i, yeah. I do believe that's and how he got now, his contract and then went three and oh in the ufc or something mm-hmm. like that and then fought neil magny i think he had three ko's too yeah dude's got the longest range as far as like reach at the 170 pound division yeah i think so, neil's magny and him are like right there neck and neck yeah neil so i i didn't meet neil but i was standing right next to him whenever i was working a show in columbia it was an xmma show that dude is a lot taller than i thought yeah uh, that he's got to be like six three, or maybe I'm just really. It's short, just but. so crazy, man. Like I fought in the 170 pound division, and when I first fighting, started fighting at 170, guys weren't that that lengthy like they are. Now. I mean, what is the dude's name? He fights 155. Uh, I think his nickname is like a tarantula or something like that. It's a black dude. He's a big guy, man. He's really good. He's very, very lengthy. I can't remember his name. It'll probably come to me at some random point throughout the podcast. But um, another just example of a real lengthy dude you would not expect to see fighting yeah. at, at that weight. Yeah, man. It's uh, Venom Page. He's That's, real long. Yep. You know? Um, Rumored that he's going to be signing with the UFC. That'd be dope. Dude, I just heard a rumor. About Bellator? Yes. I can, I can somewhat confirm that and that per probably you probably heard from the same person i heard from. probably yeah it's like 70 70 million or something yeah so yeah. uh rumor is pfl is buying bellator. bellator and gonna eat up most of the roster yeah i mean it, it'll probably be like the top 10 in each division they take uh, yeah you know something yeah. like that but to, i think is great it is great it opens up other weight classes yep you know, you get a 35-pound weight class because, right, what, PFL is only up to 45, uh, right? I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure the weight classes, yeah, but... I don't but think, I think I, they're at 45. I wouldn't mind because, seeing these, these promotions. Like, I get them not wanting to have as many weight classes as boxing, um, but I think if you have, like, a 160-165, that oh, would be amazing. Oh the fights, oh dude... Gosh. Yeah. So amazing. <laughs> yeah. People and not need to cut that way. Well, you need a 75 and a 65. Is right. What you need. Yep. Then you need a 55 and then you got the 85. Yep. You know, that's the, it needs to be every 10 pounds, man. Yep. It needs to be 10 pounds. I remember when Dana months. made a comment on that. He's like, well, what would happen was if we did that, then the people that couldn't, uh, you know, make top 10 or, or, or win a belt at 170 would go down and the people from one, they couldn't do it, hack it at 155 would go up. It's like, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Like it, they're still great fighters, yeah. and it's still going to make it's for just, great fights. It's just, it's going to eventually happen, man. Yeah, you know, like the more it'll fighters, happen when Dana leaves. The more fighters, dude, that guy just irritates me more and more <laughs> every day, man. Like with the whole thing with the whole with him and uh, not wanting to pay uh, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, yeah. You know, did you ever hear anything about that? No, I, I have not. And I never saw Wonder Boy post anything about it, but I'm sure I the know. powers that be kind of told him, like, let uh, it go. Yeah. You know, this isn't going to be a good look for you or whatever. But you know, um, the MMA doc? Uh uh-uh. uh. That's usually at most of the fights. Oh, the doctor? Yeah. Uh, For the UFC or local? No, for our. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So he trains with Wonder Boy. So, mm-hmm. um, what, something, I don't want to say his name, but yeah. Yeah. JL. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. John. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, John. <laughs> just call him John. <laughs> yeah, just say John. Uh, but yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, so um, he ends up he he trains with him, man, and so it'd be cool to you know next show you're at. By the way, when when you uh, are you doing the Citadel? Yeah, yeah. So that is October twenty so, eighth. Now I don't think I'll be refing. I think I'm just timekeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'll be there. And what date is that? The twenty eighth. Of October, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be out of town. Yeah, I think or so. no, I leave the day at the next day to go. Uh, I'm assuming Orlando. it's a Saturday. Yeah, um, yeah, I leave on Sunday. I think it is. Yeah, word. Sometimes though, they'll be like, "Hey, man, you know, I know you're timekeeping, but you want to get one in, you know?" And they'll let me get a rep or two in. So hopefully that'll happen again. Cool. Because it's been a while, man. Like, yeah, you gotta stay on them, man. You, yeah. That's... Well, the problem is, you know, in this state. The refs, we have like a handful of refs, right? But they're all very experienced. So a lot of, and they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So a lot of these promotions, rightfully so, are going to be like, hey, are these guys available? They're the best. That's who we want. I totally get it. So for me, just starting out, like, mm-hmm. I just kind of have to get in where I fit in, man. Yeah, and, true. and that's that's how it is. I know that's, that's how the game goes. And, you know. That's how it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, so next week, Bobby Southworth, that'll be a, a good, interesting podcast. Yeah, we were off. Yeah, we did, well, man. It's all good, though. Um, yeah. uh, he's and, also Strike Force champ, too. Yep. yep. Lightweight a lot Strike of people, Force champ. A lot of people don't know that uh, because, yeah. like, you know, he made some big waves in tough yeah. season, yeah. whether it was the drama between him and Chris Lieben, um, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, Strike Force champ. Um, we will be having Luke Saunders on soon, um, former UFC fighter. Um, and then uh, we're, we're talking to some other people, but nothing set in stone yet, so I don't want to jinx anything or mention anything. Yeah. But hopefully in the future we're going to have some pretty big names um, on here. So looking forward to that. This weekend we have a, a buddy of yours coming in town to do a, yep. a seminar. Well, Dan Koval. Yep, Daniel Koval. Um, black belt, obviously. Um, multiple Pan Am champ in Nogi. And just an all-around good dude. Um, so I met Dan probably man not 10 11 maybe 12 years ago yeah, something like that i don't yeah i don't remember i was in bellator and so i was used to me and kurt we used to kurt pellegrino we used to um take the train up uh, or we drive up to hoboken we park in hoboken and then we take the train into the city and um we go and we train at marcelo garcia's and I remember one day going to Marcelo's for it's the one o'clock uh, advanced no gi class. We'd go on Wednesdays, and um, I remember you know you don't know what any belt anybody is you right, know, and right. you see this guy and you'll see Dan, you know he's just a ball headed dude. He's got gnarled ears and stuff like that, yeah. you know. So you can tell he grabbled. It's a good indicator. Yeah, you can tell he's grabbled a long time, but he doesn't look. Assuming I just thought, oh, you know. Yeah, you know, regular white dude, you know. Yeah, man. Within no time, I think he had my back or triangle or something like that. And he wears two knee braces too, so it's like, you know. Yeah. Anyways, man, just messed me up for five minutes. And man. he trained with Marcelo. Yeah, he trained with Marcelo. I don't know exactly who Dan is a black belt under. He's been a black belt for a long time, right? Um. You know, and he's a judo black belt as well. Oh, nice. Um, teaches uh, in Manhattan some, and he teaches in Hoboken some in New Jersey. Right um, he teaches a lot of jiu-jitsu. He's got some uh, stuff on BJJ Fanatics, and then he's got some uh, stuff on Dijitsu. You ever heard of Dijitsu? D-I-G-I-T-S-U. Mm-mm. It's a instructional thing for your phone and stuff. Has I see what he did there. Yeah. Digit. Yeah, yeah, digital. That was smart. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. So he's got some, uh, I think, Black Magic Closed Guard is one of his famous little things he's got mm-hmm. going on. Um, so, yeah, he'll be here on Saturday, which I'm stoked for, man. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, me too. Yeah, be um, I'm, I'm just, man, anytime you get to learn from, I mean, obviously, like, we get to learn from you every day, right? But when you have somebody that comes in from out of town, um, it's all it's going to be a different style. It's a different spice, bro. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a Good different little spice, it. and yep. you just sprinkle a little bit onto your game. You're yeah. like, ooh, I'm a little spicy now. A little <laughs> bit more spicy. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. I just came up with that. You're welcome. That, that was so. actually, that was a good one. It was good, man. Um, so. so he, at Marcelo, that's where uh, old Dennis trained too, right? Dylan Dennis trained there during that time frame. Um, Did you ever have a, a role with Dylan? I've, I've rolled with Dylan. I've, I rolled with Dylan when he was a blue belt. Uh, I think I was a blue or I think I was a purple belt at the time. Um, and that was at, that was when he was like 16, man. Damn. He was young, man. How he was young he? and a killer. He's young. He's still young. Yeah, bro. he's, he's got to be younger than me. I mean, when I, when I rolled with him as a blue belt, that was... <laughs> Oh nine, word. Yeah, I had just graduated high school. I was ten. A, you're out of high school, something like that. Wow. So thirteen years ago, roughly, yeah. he was like sixteen, seventeen years old. But he was tapping black belt. It meant dude, dude people was, can say what they want about the guy, personality wise, but the dude's he's always, decorated in jiu-jitsu. His his, his personality has kind of always been, you know, kind of weird. Dude's loaded, man. But but let's be honest. If you're a blue belt. And you're tapping black belts, you are going yeah. to have a confidence about you that people yeah. might just yeah, may not understand. It might he come would off do, as so dude's his, his he comes from money, you know. Oh, does he? I didn't yeah. know that. And so dude used to drive a Range Rover. All oh, blacked shit. out, rims on it, everything to the gym, 16, 17 years old. Wow. Yeah, then he does come from money. He would come down to uh the shore, Jersey Shore for, you know, um for um, for vacation with family and stuff like that, and he would come to Kurt's to train. So I rolled with him when he was a brown belt too. Okay, when he would start when he was like winning, yeah, you know, big tournaments and stuff like that. So I rolled with him as his brown belt, and he'd come at, train with Kurt some. And dude was savage. He wouldn't. I mean, he w- wouldn't stop until he got the pass. Mm-hmm. You know, it was relentless, relentless pace. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. guys thought, and people at um at the academy. Kurt thought he was an asshole, because but he would just beat you, beat you, yeah. Like I mean, beat you in jujitsu. Um, I I roll him brown belt. He didn't really beat me. I don't I don't remember. I think maybe he might have passed my guard or something. Um, but I don't, I mean, and you were was, were you black by that? Point? No, huh? I was like a purple. Okay, so he passed me. Oh wow, yeah. wow. Yep. I think I was a purple. Roll with him as a brown. He got his purple, um, and then he got his brown. So he didn't get those from Marcelo. He got them from the dude named Jamie Cruz. Because uh, him and Marcelo had a falling out, right? Well, he got his black belt from Marcelo, but then oh, okay. then him and Marcelo had him falling out. Got you. Yep. But, uh, yeah, he yeah. was in. So him and Kurt were cool for the longest time, man, and then him and Kurt had a falling out too. And it's just he had a falling out with everybody, man. Yeah. And But um, when I'd go to Marcelo's, I think – Kurt was looking for um, some some turtles for his daughter one time. Some little <laughs> okay, you okay. know. You know I didn't, at first, I was like, "Where's this I going, know, man? <laughs> what are those little turtles called that you the, keep the in miniature a little, ones that you can keep in a little um, like a tank? Sand dollar turtles or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the small ones. Yeah, 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 that you can keep in a tank. Well, yeah. uh, Kurt talked to Dylan because they were cool back then. And Dylan went into Chinatown because that's the only place you get them. Okay. It's like Chinatown. They sold them in like this place in Chinatown. Anyways, yeah, you can get them at any beachwear store here. I know, right? <laughs> but New York, New Jersey is weird. Yeah. Like, they got to have – it's almost communist country in New York and New Jersey, bro. Like if you want to get a freaking gun or something, you got to go yeah, through good luck, dude. all kinds of stuff. Good luck. Anyways, went over – he stayed in the same building as Marcelo, dude. Marcelo's Academy, right next door. Go right next. Boom, we went up this, like, building or whatever. Went into his apartment that he had. Right nice, in, huh? in Manhattan, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was his dad's or something like that. But I'm – anyways, man, it was uh, it was just wild, dude. Yeah. Like, um, the kid's just living it up, training in New York City. And – and uh right beside Marcelo's Academy, you know? It was it was really cool. I was like, man, I wish this was my life. Right? Shit. You know? Yeah. So Dylan, Dylan's a, like, it's it's just wild, man, you know, to see the progression of things. And Marcelo's just the nicest guy in the world, and how mm-hmm. do you have a falling out with him, you know? Yeah. So. 
I, uh, I mean, I, I haven't really looked into what happened. I mean, it's really none of my business. But yeah, um, and then and then he know. didn't show up for a fight, right? Dylan. Yeah. Wasn't well, I know he, he had a boxing to... match with like a YouTuber, but now he's supposed to. Wasn't it fight. Jake? No, it was with uh, the KSI guy. Now he's supposed to fight Logan uh, in like a month. Yeah, but I thought he didn't show up. For no, like no, the, that was a different one. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So they they just had a press conference. Um, he, well, he, he showed, didn't show he up to the press he showed up to the press conference. He showed up late. Uh, um, and then like Logan had like this cake he made. He had made of it was a seven thousand dollar cake of Dylan Dennis on the ground, like knocked out, and on his boxing shorts they gave him a camel toe. <laughs> And then Logan like ripped the head off the cake and like threw it at di- just a bunch of optics, you know, for a press conference oh to try gosh, to get some yeah. pay per view buys. I'm gonna be honest though, I do think, I do think Logan's gonna beat him. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen Dylan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I watched this fight to Bellator, man. Straight I, for the double leg. Yeah, I can't believe he he just it's talks money shit, grab, dude. man. Yeah, and you he know, learned it from. From Connor. Connor. And speaking of Connor, did you see he got his black belt? I did Jitsu. see that. Did you see the first picture he posted in his gi wearing his black belt? The movie he's doing in the gi? Uh-uh. A heel hook in the gi? Really? Yeah. Look at this. This happens to me every Dude, I, I every set time. it up. So what I did was I put it back a little bit and I turned it. So um, it seemed to work for me. I'm, I've been experimenting with this thing every week. Yeah. These stands are something else, bro. He's boom. Um, but Anyways. yeah, so how do, you, how do you feel about the Connor black belt thing? Have you ever seen him like train at I all? I never even. I didn't even know he trained in the gi. But I, I mean, he has to. Yeah. John Cavanaugh is a is a great guy, and so who knows how he's gonna. I read his book. Uh, he's got a good book out. Um, but it's. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, I guess we'll see how it translates. I'm really big on MMA fighters. Um, training in the gi. Right. Well, you you really said that's one on thing it. you really respect about Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Uh, and. So it's it's just wild, man. I just I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen him train in the gi ever yeah, as much. And, and the times know, we've seen him fight on the ground, and oh, he gets it, murdered. Yeah, it's never yeah. really been that great. I mean, he did get up a, a few times when he fought Khabib, but we know yeah. how that ended, you know, <laughs> against the cage and a serious yeah. like bulldog, yeah, neck it's crank, wild, man. Um, so we just had. Uh, let's talk about worlds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Master Worlds just happened in Vegas. Jiu-Jitsu Con just happened in Vegas. Right. Uh, Ethan was out there um, coaching. We had a Master 6 female uh, brown belt compete, and um, nobody showed up in her division, so she automatically got gold. And then so she did absolute division, which is all weight classes, and she won. She won gold. And, and Ethan told me it was a great match, too. Yeah. I didn't see it, but yeah. he said it was a great match. Chick was like seven foot tall, just about man. What? Chick was huge, is, big. And is is it, I don't want to say big, is it Genie or Genie? Genie? Is it Genie? Genie? Okay. Well, well it's spelled J E A N Y. So Gene. That's what y. we'll go with. G- Gene Y. Gene Y. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't watch this. <laughs> Gene y. Uh, but Gene. um. Jeannie's a pharmacist too, bro. Is she? Yep. I've seen her in here all the time. Like she puts into work. She's legit pharmacist. I'm not talking like, you know, she is a a pharmacist. Like not like the little workers with the pharmacist. She's the pharmacist. Right. You know, she's what I'm making saying? cake. Oh yeah. That's yeah. sick. And I think she had a she had a um a pharmacy and then sold it. Oh wow. Yeah, up in Pennsylvania. And now I think she works for like CVS or something. Nice. Yeah. And training. Training. And, yeah. and winning. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, she's competed before. This wasn't her first time. Like, yeah, Jeannie just come, came to us about three months ago, though. Um, she moved down here a little over a year ago from Pennsylvania, trained with a dude named Jeremy Henderson, which is a. Um, uh, Check mat? Nope. RMNU. Um, Hopsamora, I think, okay. is the name of it. Our menu. Man, I hope I'm not getting that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, I used to know all the little things, but now it's like I get brain farts all the time now. Well, when you. Megan when you, says my memory is terrible, which it is. Mine is too. 
I have I have and a legitimate like, excuse. You need to go me. to back to the VA. She's like, you can't remember anything. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's been a problem since I was a kid. Like I've always had a problems with memory remembering stuff. I have know? bad problems with like remembering short term stuff. Long term stuff. Yeah. I mean, I dude, I can For remember sure. yeah, things yeah, like yeah. whenever I was a kid that yeah. most people. I remember know. long term. Yeah, but it yeah. is short. So like. I have that shuttle bus in my house. I go cut it on, and like yesterday, dude, I've already I've done this one time. Cut it on to kind of run it, you know, so it can stay operating and keep the battery charged, and then left it running the whole entire time. Like, really? Until it ran out of fuel. Oh no! Because I just I left, came here to the academy, and I'm like, sleep at eight o'clock at night. I'm like, I left the bus running. I can run out there. It's like not even on anymore, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that. I haven't reached. I haven't I reached almost, that almost almost did that yesterday too, man. Because I started it and then I got doing stuff into the house. Because I was gonna let it run for like 15 minutes. There's no reason for me to just sit out there and watch it run. Right. So I'm like taking care of other stuff around the house, and I just so happen to go outside. It's like, oh shit. When do you plan on using that thing? So, um, getting ready to transport over into an indoor facility because. Uh, I'm getting uh, Jeff is going to take out the back four windows because there's so many windows in it, and those back two um, are near where we're going to be sleeping. And Good idea to get rid of those. Yeah. And so we're going to get rid of those, and we'll add extra insulation in back there. So, man, I've had it over a year now, almost two years in October I've had it, I think. And, uh, yeah, two years in October, wow. And uh, which is – crazy um i used it i took it out to the farm one time and used it then but i just gotta i gotta do it man ever since baby's been born i haven't been able i mean building the shuttle bus trying to make a build the shuttle bus into like a little camper type thing and it looks so much easier on youtube yeah (laughs) and it looks so diy videos and instagram Uh that are only a minute long videos (laughs) you know it's like I can do that, and it doesn't show you it took me two years or right. a year or so, you know. I was cracking for the first six months, man, and then Bodhi came, summer and Bodhi came along, mm. and then it's kind of like, you know, summer was there, and then Bodhi hit in October. There was no more construction after that, man. Right. Because all my free time is literally so I can take care of him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So – Gene Y competed. Gene, Gene. Uh, Lucas competed as well. Yep. Um, we got a chance to watch that here after open mat. Um, you know, I don't know where I got this from. I think I might have, like, kind of ripped it from Friday. Uh, but it just came to my head the other day, and it's, you know, we win some, we lose some, but we learn every day, right? So, um, I, you know, I talked We lived to, to buy another day. Right, right. The, the water boy. No, no, I'm thinking of uh We lived to buy it another day. Oh wait, what? We lived to buy it another day. You know, like the I don't remember little, that part. Little Cajun guy, he's, his eyes are all crossed yeah. eyes. We lived to fight another day. Oh, but, he, he's, but like, he's like We nice. lived to buy it another day. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude. Like I talked to Lucas before he left. He's like, you know, whatever happens, right? Like i as long as you get out of this, as long as you could take something away from this experience. And Talking to him yesterday, um, he will never let a neon belly go again. <laughs> like, like he, I was like, man, you know, we're watching it, and uh, you would have gotten two points if you had just lifted your knee off the mat. I was like, I oh, know, man. I know. that It makes me so angry watching it back. And I was like, yeah, like, yeah. As, as it should, because yeah. I bet you that won't happen again. You know, and, it sucked that you had to go to Las Vegas to yeah, learn that. Yeah, and it's but. also a, a sense of urgency, man. When you're in a big tournament like that, any little point that somebody scores on you, you need to have a sense of urgency like, oh, no, I can't. No, 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 no. Oh, crap, I got to get that point back. I gotta get. It's now like if you score first, you can kind of, all right, I got my two points now. Like, all right, now how can I get more points? How can I prevent right. them from scoring? Not stalling. But right. once you get your first two points, you're like, you know, if the time runs out, you, you win. win. Right. You know, that's what's so important. It's like, you know, with 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 these tournaments, especially IBJJF, it has to become tactical because everybody at these tournaments are really good. 
So submitting another person that is really, really good, you're really good. You don't want to be submitted really easy. It's hard, right? So that's why the points are, are important. That's why it's good to know the point system. It's good to know the little rules of like on the old belly, you can't have both knees. You can't have one knee on the mat. You have to have your foot and not your knee. Right. You know, just to, knowing one little bitty rule like that, knowing whether or not your pat, your gi is legal or not, you know? Oh, yeah, he did have some or, issues. Yep. Yeah, or wet, knowing, you know, uh, weighing in with your gi multiple times throughout the week to know how much weight, you know, and like getting a gi that's comfortable, but, you know, lightweight as well. Mm -hmm. And having multiple geese as backups that aren't the same exact gi, right. you know, in case you do run into that issue. So it's like, it's a, it's a chance to learn. It's a chance to grow. And that's all that happened. You know, he learned and he growed. He didn't really lose, you know, and he learned from, from that, you know, it yeah. was a lesson. Yep. Uh, most importantly. And it sucks that, you know, the results aren't everything he wanted, but. But, you know, because of that, um, because of that experience, it might be a driver to one day achieve those results that he was hoping to get. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether it's at Worlds, whether it's just at IBJJF tournament somewhere. Yeah. Dude, I um, went to Pan Ams and back in 2019, we had been opened in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I went to Pan Ams in March of 2019. So didn't really have a good camp. And I got smoked first round, man. I got tapped first round by Newbar, and I was just like, uh, what just happened, man? And so it made it was like, all right, it fueled me into a little bit of depression because like I'm like, man, like um what happened? Yeah. <laughs> well, what I didn't prep like I should. After that, dude, I just started training hard, 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 hard. Unfortunately, I had Ray Han and then guys from Wilmington would come down and then, you know, and I did other IBJJFs as well. I did, like, Miami Open. I did, like, Orlando Open. I've done, you know, I do, like, D.C. Open, different things, and then build up, and then you go to Pan Ams, and, you know, you do better. You know, I right. would win my first match instead of losing my first match. Right. You know? And beat an opponent that's that I had never beaten before, my you know. So, anyways, man, it it's a it's a long horde battle to to be good at jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, and as far as competing, um, maybe taking advantage of like you know the smaller regional things like new definitely, dude. Naga. That's where you go to polish and work on little things. Yeah, you and know? to learn lessons. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, those are, those are that, those little new breeds and different things like that. If you sign up early, they're 95 bucks. Yeah. You know, it's not as cheap as it was when I first started. Like, right. I mean, it was well, like 50 it's also bucks, grown, man. Yeah. yeah. It's growing exponentially. Know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know, man, it's, it's a lot. And, um, but if you want to do that, if that's what you want to do in your life, then that's what you, you have to do. Yeah. I mean, it's investing in yourself, right? Like, yeah. just about with any kind of... I wouldn't have the experience I had right now if I wouldn't have drove by myself hours and hours and hours, by myself, paid for registration, go to a tournament, go to compete, maybe win, you know, lose some, drive by myself all the way back, you know, mm -hmm. and think about the things that I did that I messed up on. Right. You know, I've I've been there. You know, I've driven hours and I've been pulled over on the way and it's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I got pulled over, I got a ticket. And then sometimes I'd get, I wouldn't get pulled over and I'd make it there safely and then I'd have a shitty day at the tournament. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's, it goes hand in hand, man. Life's wild. It's just how we treat it. Yep. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It's still, still cool. Um, even though, you know, Lucas didn't get the result he wanted. It's still cool to see him, um, chase after you know something something yeah. that, that he that he's he passionate about yeah, right for sure. exactly and that that's inspiring yeah um in itself so props to old luca duke that's what i call him or old goody yeah, his last name's goodwin so i always called him goody goody um but uh yeah looking forward to uh to old dan this it's saturday yeah um kind of hoping that um 
you know, well, I'm sure there will be something that I can take away and implement, like, because I'm just a white belt, right? I'm yeah. still very much so just trying to master, not even really master basics, right? But just, like, get them, like, to the point where I remember them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so hopefully there will be some good things that I can take from this and implement yeah. in, into my game to, to ultimately yeah, I'm pretty grow and get better. pretty excited about it, too, yeah. as well, man. So be a good good day for everybody for everybody at the academy. So right on, yeah, man. And um, shit, I don't even know how long we've been going, but what time is it? Huh. like thirty minutes. Yeah. Um, is there anything uh, else coming up in terms of? I know Austin's got a fight coming up, right? December eighth. Just uh, kind of just um, said yes to a fight in Atlanta yesterday for uh. Promotion called NFC, NFC. Okay, NFC, heard of them. Yep. And we say awesome. We've had him on the pod before. The assassin Austin Coleman, yep. um, one of the guys that was in here. Earlier yeah, he's coming off a loss, so this will be. Um, it's good promotion. It's very well ran, um, so won't ha- shouldn't have any issues. Georgia, they're Georgia is really good with their. Um, they've been Georgia. Georgia's been in the MMA industry for a long time. Mm-hmm. And the promotion he's fighting for has been around the game for a long time, too. Um, when I fought for him, they weren't called NFC. They were called uh, Wild Bill's Fight Night. Oh, yeah. You were telling me about yeah. about one of your fights there. And, like, they had like they had the cage and then, like, the stands were, like, raised around it. So, it was no, it was square cage. So, you had the box ring. Right. And it was square ring. And then, yeah, you around it you had, you know, there's just like is a bar. It's a right. big giant bar in Atlanta. I think it's closed down now. But it used to be called Wild it was called Wild Bills. I wanna say it was in Kennesaw or right outside of Atlanta, either way. And um I fought there and so the promoter is this old little short Jewish guy. And his name's Dave Oblis and um he he has been in the MMA promoting and fight promoting business for a long time, dude. He's an OG at it. So um, he knows what he's doing. And, um, you know, it's good that, you know, Austin gets to fight for a promotion that, you know, I used to fight for, that I fought for as well. Right on. Yeah. Did uh, did Jeremiah fight for them one time too? Um, No. Okay. Um, yes. I, I want to yeah. say that whenever yeah, he was that, on, you guys were talking yeah, about that. That was his first pro fight, I think. Yeah. Right on. But it was uh, – Thing it was before it's called the NFC. Gotcha. Yeah. Right on, dude. Um yeah. well shorter episode today. Um, but you know, is what it is. We'll have some long ones, we'll have some shorter ones. Yeah. But uh I know we both got shit we gotta do today. <laughs> <laughs> so it's life, you know. It's life, man. Mike can hear my son in the back just oh, yelling. Yeah, yeah. Bodie, Bodie doesn't sound too happy oh, right now. Man. He's just all over the place with his walking dude and just yeah. <laughs> running everywhere man all over the place getting it, into everything it's cool to watch him um watch you though like i was like whenever i was videotaping you guys sparring earlier i would occasionally like put the camera over on him there'd be parts where he'd be like crying and i put it on me just like <laughs> and then i move back and then and then i look over him, and he has hands off and it's like <laughs> kids back and forth yeah man. It's, yeah it's funny to watch. it is man and it's, like i like having him in here man i like having him in here as much as like you know he can watch stuff because I'm a good visual learner. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to watch uh, highlight videos in jiu-jitsu of, like, high-level guys, and then, you know, it made me, it, like, I don't know, I would be able to do some of those things in that, you know, mm-hmm. so or see the way they move in different positions. And I used to think, I'm like, man, how, like, did they, you know, figure out how to do it's that move? Mm-hmm. It's just being in that position so many times with so many different people that you under, you know what to do in that position. Right. Uh, it's wild, man. Yeah. yeah, well, that's it's the beginning of, like, a story. Like, you, you know, like, um, hear fighters or, like, boxers maybe say, yeah, you know, or wrestlers a lot of times. Like, yeah, you know, I used to go to class with my dad when I was younger. You know, I wasn't old enough to, to participate, but I'd sit there and watch. I mean, uh-huh. Bodie's literally before he could walk. Has been in here yeah. watching almost every single day. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Bodie like, Kennington, one day that yeah. that is going to uh, be a fighter. Let's, we'll see. We'll see. 
One day he's going to be beating yeah. you up, man. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. Take us out, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Um, we appreciate every little thing we can get. Um, our subscriptions are going up and our views are going up. Let's keep at going at it. Uh, we appreciate everything you guys do. And, uh, you know, we're, we're here every week. Uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock, we drop a new podcast. So um, be on the lookout. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, next week, Bobby Southworth. That's going to be one to check out um, for sure. It's going to be interesting. I can't wait for that. It's going to be interesting, yeah. interesting cool. time all around. Uh, so, yeah, appreciate y'all, and until uh, next time. Thanks. Boom.